Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of It's Not uh, With me today is Mark Chaxfield. Hello. John McCann. What up? And this man is James Peckham. Hello. So this week we are talking about exciting news about space travel. Um, a chip that can charge in 10 minutes. Chip or chimp? A chimp. A, well, a chimp would be great, but yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know what that would mean. Um, <laughs> how your phone can save a tree. Um, and why Mickey Mouse is making the first smartwatch we'd actually like to wear. Mm. But to kick off, we're going to do our What If feature um, off the back of the news that the um, Wu-Tang Clang's album, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, uh, sold this week, I believe, for millions uh, to someone who is not allowed to actually release it commercially for 88 some years. Idiot. So basically, there's an album, there's one copy of this album, and no one's going to hear it, uh, apart from this one person, yeah. for 88 years. So my question is, what, if anything, would you like to, if you could have the chance to put something away for 88 years, what would it be? And why? And I'm going to start with you, Mark. I'm, I'm being pragmatic about this. So I'm thinking that any technology we try and put away for the next 88 years, it's just not going to work. Because mm -hmm. it's going to go into some catch it's not going to think. But uh, there was an English inventor, uh, Trevor, Trevor Bayliss, who invented the wind-up radio. I think if you put that in for 88 years, you're going to get out 88 years later, wind it up, you're going to listen to whoever is uh, on Radio 1 <laughs> in 88 years' time. You listen to the Wu-Tang You could listen to you the Wu-Tang Clan. Wu Maybe Wu the first so release of the Wu-Tang Clan. Radio, first radio all the radio radio. stations are shut down. This and is not no longer exist anymore. This is not Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to go for an apocalypse. The yeah, only other... The DAB, wasn't it? it yeah, I, yeah, maybe. The only other thing I thought of was um, I loved that uh, story about um, the ET game getting buried and then mm, found right. like fifty yeah. years later. Yes, yeah. I just thought, what terrible game would we want to bury yeah. now? Yeah, and get rid of. And I thought the Order eight eight six that obviously was nice. a terrible yeah. game. It's, it's yeah. Well, it's a bit of a letdown. I wouldn't say it's terrible. I think there were maybe it's not ET standard. No, <laughs> that's a bit of an unfair comparison. But yeah, I see a point. <laughs> see a point. So yeah, so it would be it'd be some rubbish game to to for eight, eight years or a wound up radio that probably. Would work. Okay, John. Well, I may have misunderstood in the <laughs> process what exactly this segment was about. So, uh, if anything, any media, any piece of tech, anything you'd like that you could um, bury for eighty-eight years. Can I just say I'd rather hear John? Can you give yeah. us your answer? Yeah. What were you the, going what to say? What is the answer? Just, just off the bat. So you ask the question: What are you going to bury for eighty-eight years? Yes. What's your answer? I thought it was more of a time capsule thing of people to look back in the past rather than something that people may actually use come ATAs. No, no, years. I think it was okay. as well. I, I kind of okay, that's okay. Well, I just went for the original Samsung Galaxy Gear because it's just a bit bonkers, and yeah. people in the future will be like, "What is this? No. Like, seriously, <laughs> what's going on?" There's like this little volcanic camera attachment, not an attachment, it's just built into the strap. It's like, mm. what? Why? Why? You know, some sort of perverted use for that quite possibly yeah you know? well it's sort of the, the well, prehistoric re remains of whatever they'll have in 88 years in terms of a smartwatch probably exactly. visible or I something mean, crazy so it'll paint us as a generation of purrs and i don't want to be <laughs> it's like <laughs> arcade games <laughs> really yeah but you know yeah, it'll, no, it'll be true. interesting you know it, it could rewrite history for them because they'll be like hang on they're not as inventive as uh they just wrote a weird. actually they're yeah. just a load of pervs and it'll really confuse them and uh yeah i, I quite like the confusion factor okay you're going to be known as the guy who put it in though you're going to be known as that perv that went and put that watch in. John the, the smartwatch perv. camera perv. <laughs> Emperor perv. <laughs> James, what would you Why is that an issue, think? though? Mine <laughs> links back into Mark's about the uh, video games, and I was thinking of putting the entire Call of Duty franchise Ooh. into it, purely so we'd have to play it for the next 88 years. <laughs> and it's going to Burn. look... Burn. <laughs> it's going to look so dated in 88 years' time. Hopefully it'll be like World Peace and that kind of stuff. That's what we're going to be looking back at this. And that kind of war simulator element of it and everything of it, it's going to look so dated. That's why I It'd be lovely in 88 years that they do open it up and um, magically able to play it and go, what is this guns violence? We don't have yeah, that yeah. anymore. <laughs> we have this beautiful, lovely thing that's <laughs> flowing. Yeah. Uh, we've got 88 years worth of perverts. But other than that, we haven't got anything. <laughs> And uh, as we know, the tank actually has to be made of glass filled with a special type of gas, which escapes me at the moment to make sure it's uh, safe. Yes. Definitely. Um, if I <laughs> personally, I was going to go for. Um, so I thought, first of all, start the new Star Wars movie. If we put it in now, how annoyed everyone would be, <laughs> and how much, how much that would force sort of progress into you know extending yeah. human well, so life. Nobody sees it. So well, they, nobody, put it in, nobody yeah. Yeah. So nobody will see it for eight years. Do we still get episode eight? <laughs> yes. We don't know what's yeah. happening. <laughs> it's just <laughs> really confusing. <laughs> like where do all these characters come from? Um, but then I thought actually something like Epic Movie, which was just awful, but just and then mm. everyone's kind yeah. of in on it, and we all tell we we agree to keep the secret for generations that um, we we pretend Epic Movie is really it really is an Epic Movie, yeah. and then in eighty eight years they're just really disappointed. They're all like, haha, jokes on you guys. Yeah. But that could so. be what Wu Tang Clan have done. 
They could it have could made well the worst be. album of all could time well and gone, be. you can't, you can't, like, you can't show this to anyone for 88 years. But this is, is the, that one guy knows. Exactly, but this is the issue with physical media that actually if you did this 30 years ago, yeah. who's got a VHS player? Mm. And it's kind of like, I, 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 I like that they've chosen an LP because that's obviously mm. lasted the, mm. the, the, the standard of time, but even in 80 odd years time are we going to have LPs to even play this that's a very good point yeah mm-hmm. not that that's even going to happen yeah. anyway what happens if this person leaks it well, well this is know the who thing. it is they're, they're not well, yeah I think not <laughs> half, half an idea but, but as the agreement is that they're not allowed to commercially uh, they're not allowed to release it for, for but what if they do what if 50 well if they time, do I like... don't know there's probably some contract saying they get in a lot of trouble or I know some have to pay a Rizzo fine just I, come to the house and I go do, yeah hey, just someone just wave their thing and like, yeah. that's mm-hmm. not how it's done um, okay so moving on to the sort of first big story um, of the week uh, which is the you guys probably heard it already. Um, Jeff Bezos's uh, Blue Origins company, which he founded, have launched their new Shepard spacecraft um, for a sub-or- suborbital test flight, which successfully took off and landed. Um, on, now, this is the first time a rocket's flown into space and landed safely on the ground. So it's actually quite a big deal mm. uh, for space travel. It has caused a bit of controversy because Elon Musk, um, now whose company SpaceX, is working on their own rocket called Falcon 9 um, to do the same thing. It hasn't had quite the same success. Mm. Tweeted that um, it wasn't, you know, we have to distinguish between, you know, the atmosphere and, and space and that it wasn't quite, yeah. but it, it sort of was really. And there's been a lot of debate this week about, oh, what is, you know, orbital and suborbital, suborbital. Um, the, the important distinction being that um, Musk's rocket is actually an orbital, wants to go all the way up into space, while Bezos doesn't. Um, so I think this is quite exciting. I mean, mm. you know, a lot of fancy words, but essentially what it is, is there's gonna, it's a big step forward for commercial space travel, right? I mean, it is. that's quite a cool but thing. But it's also a big step forward for two billionaires looking like yes. yeah. playground fighting sort of thing. Yes. It's just, I just think it's amazing that uh, we should be celebrating the fact that this rocket has landed. Mm. And for Elon Musk... Celebrating? Mar- yeah. It's not like winning the World Cup, No, it's not, it? no but it's... It's space, better space, than winning the World Cup. It's space exploration. Cup, it's taking... A, it's not space exploration. They just it's, reached orbit. It's the beginning of space exploration taken away from NASA. So NASA's got a big mm. hold on the, on the space race at the moment. Yeah. It's people that... That obviously they are billionaires and stuff, but it's kind of democratizing that idea of um, space. So it could eventually mean that you could go up in space rather than a multi multi millionaire. Don't know if that will happen, but I just love the idea that this is this this happened. It was interesting. It was pretty cool. We should be mm. celebrating it. Elon Musk sends a snarky tweet going, "Well, mate, you haven't yeah. you haven't gone the, the proper way. We're doing yeah. it properly." It's like Elon Musk should have gone. Bezos, well done, mate. I'll mm, tell you what, we're going to try and go higher, <laughs> yeah. and then why don't you try and beat us after that and yeah. actually push each other to, mm. to make it? Healthy, Competition so. and health in. I think I, I really like what Elon Musk is doing. Mm. Hyperloop and everything like that is, is crazy, mental, but, but cool. He should be celebrating that somebody else is trying it as well, n- not getting snarky that, that someone mm. beat him to it. I think that's ridiculous. Mm. I, I do. I, I completely agree with you. Um, and they are two different rockets. You know, They want to do different things, so it seems a bit odd that he, he'd get all up on his high horse about this but I, th- I think it's really exciting you know that in our lifetime we mm. are potentially going to be able to yeah. get a rocket for a ridiculous sum of money but nonetheless that this could be a thing that's happening and is Virgin still going or after their crash is that sort of over yeah, now yeah it's I'm sure they will be but I, yeah. I think at the that's the problem it's, that it's a dangerous game it and, is and, and yeah. for something like the Virgin thing to happen you can understand why they're either stalling the project or mm. thinking about it again. Mm. Uh, and with Elon Musk as well, obviously it's mm. not manned, but there's been a lot of, every time a rocket explodes or doesn't land properly, that costs a lot of money. Mm. Mm. So um, so that's why we should be celebrating that something's gone up and come back down. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. So for the second uh, big story of the week, uh, this is about the chip that can charge uh, in 10 minutes. And mm. I'm gonna turn to James Peckham here to explain what this is all about. Just to confirm, is this about smartphones? Um, I believe there will well, be well boring then uh, because <laughs> smartphone talk on a podcast is always Packing boring in. see you next week here guys. we go <laughs> yeah, close it my eyes for to be fair this isn't specifically about smartphones so the researchers that have done this they've managed to make a little chip that um, goes inside the battery which allows a device to charge very very quickly and basically they've managed, they've managed they think they can charge smartphones within 10 minutes up to full from zero uh, that's how quick it can go so the way it works is instead of doing it in little bursts like a battery works at the moment this will just keep going and it has a temperature gauge on it so it knows when the when the phone or the device is getting too hot 
this can be applied to anything. It can be electric cars, it can be any kind of device you can think of. That's that's how they want to apply this. So they've already been, to, the researchers that have done this have already been to Sony and Samsung and tried to pitch it to them. But the problem is it's not going to be ready until early 2017, like late 2016, early 2017. And then it's got to get into chips and cells and then it's got to get into the batteries. It's got, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff to, there's a lot of hurdles to jump before we actually get to that point. But being able to charge your car in 10 minutes or being able to charge your smartphone. So it doesn't matter the size of the product? It is. I think it's a different chip, but the right, okay. technology will work in exactly the same kind of way. Wow. The thing is, though, it sounds amazing, and it mm. would be, but again, it, it's quite possibly a thing that's too good to be true. We've heard so yeah. many over the last few years of someone in a university going, we've got this really good concept of a fast charger yeah, or a long-lasting battery, and it's just like, well, yes, in your very sort of... Mm pared down lab environment it and you sort of works three times. <laughs> exactly but yeah. it can't be scaled or yeah. it's not long lasting or yeah. whatever and it never it never makes it to market so while this would be this is really cool no mm. question about it if it actually gets to market i'd be very surprised but the good news about this one is they've actually already been to the manufacturers they've been to sony they've been to samsung and stuff so they've actually gone and had this conversation so they must be brave. well they must be confident enough in it anyone can talk anyone can how, many, how many times yeah. have people been batting down the doors of Sony or Samsung going look I've got battery yeah. technology it's amazing mm. I've got aerial technology it's amazing yeah. so yeah. I'm not saying that this won't happen but I'm sure behind closed doors a lot of, a lot of people have been trying to push yeah. this thing there's, there's obvious reasons why battery technology isn't good enough at the moment if it was awesome surely Samsung or Sony would have gone right with that that's, the thing, yeah. that's why I thought the story should be is mm. Sony have said yes to this uh, amazing crazy mit idea but yeah uh, they haven't suggested. but the thing is i feel like and this might just be me that i do feel like we are on the verge of a breakthrough in mm. battery technology it's, yeah. it's getting we'll better well, we've got fast charging at the moment haven't we? which is exactly. really good yeah. wireless charging is actually working now yeah which for many years it was like yeah it's wireless but you need to attach cable and then you need to attach this yeah yeah and then do that and then put that on top and then yes you can start charging it'll take yeah. 10 hours yeah but um, we're, we're getting there, and I think, uh, yeah, like I said, the Samsung, uh, there is other fast chargers as well, isn't there? But I've got Samsung phone, and the fast charger is brilliant on it. The wireless is great on it. F for something to charge in 10 minutes would be amazing, because mm. that is the, the biggest bane of everyone's life, is, is the constant charging they have mm. to do with, with phones mm. and tablets. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Well. definitely. Um, cool, so obviously this isn't the only thing that's been happening this week. I'm going to delve in just briefly to some of the other stories via our commenters. Now, our Ooh. commenters are lovely. We do, we do love them, and we do appreciate the comments. Um, some of them are nicer than feature. others. We haven't got a name for this feature. There's still a name for this feature. Again, if, if anyone's got any ideas for this feature, please let us know in the comments. Uh, let, let us know or tweet at us. Um, How about so, Hugh's comment, commentary? Well, it was originally going to be <laughs> YouTube um, when it was just YouTube comments, but uh, you know, that was quite, quite restricting. You, know, mm. you don't want to go out the door with those sorts of restrictions, John. So, um, so, these can be, so these can now be from tweets, from Facebook, from the articles themselves on the site, uh, or from YouTube, or letters if you've yeah. mailed us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It all counts. It's all valid. Um, so, Morse code. Yeah. Facts. Yeah, Very if you can read Morse code, then Well, I can't, you're reading it. You've got okay. to read Morse code. <laughs> So okay, <laughs> a very subtle way of getting hold of it. I don't know how I'd even pick up on that. I hear a tapping. I'll, I'll um, give us our first comment then. <laughs> Ooh, swearing at Morse code. Um, so, uh, the first one, uh, just kicking off with an easy one. Uh, this is a tweet, um, and this one just said, Sounds like a bad episode of Star Trek. Which story from this week were they referring to? This is a test of all your knowledge or to see if you've something been Star Wars related, people, you know, a Star be, Trek fan be. just like boom. Well, there was the Star Trek yeah, there was that. story this week. Yeah, they had Star a prototype, Trek. Uh, Star Trek communicator. communicator. But yeah. it does that's that is a bad episode yeah. of Star Trek. So does it sound like a bad episode of Star Trek? <sighs> I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna go with the Star Trek communicator. Okay, any other any other guesses? Um Black Friday deals. Ooh, I've said that. Oh. Uh, no, no, no guess. All right, all right. Well, it's no, no. actually not uh, from that. Right. It's from the story um, that a startup, Hume, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, reckon they're on their way to working out how to transfer human consciousness into an AI body after they've died, and their claim is that they reckon they can make this happen within three decades. That sounds like a great episode of Star Trek. To be honest, it does. I mean, maybe Star Trek <laughs> technology is a little more advanced than that, is what they're saying. Of Star Trek. That's, That's nowhere true. near the worst yeah. episode of Star Trek. <laughs> there's, there's no fighting a rubber monster on some sort of cliff. Come on. True, you true. Don't know. That might be the end. I, that story worries me. 
yeah. fascinates me and worries me in equal measure. Yeah, that, uh, our whole entire consciousness can be uploaded. Well, into it's AI. it's yeah, it is worrying. And the thing is, though, there's only five people working on this project at the moment, so I can't imagine. I mean, three decades is. But they're the world's positive. best five. Well, they are. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And also, so, so is one of the, do, do one of those have to die for the project to be? I'd imagine <laughs> they haven't actually decided yet. <laughs> they all picking straws yeah. at the moment. Going, oh, not yeah, Je- Jeff has no idea what's about that. We haven't told him yet. But uh, um, okay, might coin a new phrase. Beam me in, Scotty. There not we go. Bad. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. You're number six. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, the next one comes from Facebook uh, from Paul Rhymeringer thank you Paul um, who says uh, in a comment on a story a dream of spies gangsters and drug dealers a dream of spies gangsters and drug dealers which story is Paul Rhymeringer referring to sounds something like Apple interesting (laughs) gangsters don't really come to mind with Apple but yeah true um Oh, we are terrible at this. Do not know why it's. I it's think a bit of a hard one, obviously. Next week, maybe yeah. give us options. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are we writing about? Oh, uh, Jessica Jones review. That's no. Oh, no. no. Jessica, not, not a bad guess, though. Not a bad yes. guess. Um, not any spies in it, but. Your Battlefront review, maybe. Also, not terribly bad uh, guess, <laughs> but a uh, bit. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I'll be, I'll be blunt. Any yeah. guesses, John? Best Netflix shows you must watch. No, never mind. Um, so this comes from the story of Volvo testing out in-car deliveries uh, in Sweden. How and was that is... close with Jessica Jones? It was Get closer. Out. It was closer. Uh, well, the, you know, spies, gangsters. It was a bit of a weird one, this anyway. But basically, Volvo is testing out in-car deliveries mm. in Sweden, I think, right. which is bizarre anyway. So instead of coming to your door, they're going to deliver to your car where you left it parked. I think it, it just, to me, this sounds like, why would I want that? Why would I ever want that to happen? Like, it just seems... What, can they unlock the door? So, yeah, in? I guess it, yes. it's, a, it's a deal with Volvo. So, the, the, the Volvo... Oh, okay. Maybe I'm entirely making sure. this up, but I'm sure Tesco do something along those kind of lines. You can drive to the store and then drive into a little, like, drive through and they'll right. put the mm. stuff in your car. But, for example, if you're at the office all day, you aren't yeah. home to take your delivery, yeah. so they can come to your office car park, use a smart key to just open your boot, put all your shopping in there, close the boot, and then half an hour later when you finish work, you get in your car, drive yeah, home, shopping's really already there. It's, it's more interesting than, than Amazon doing drones, isn't it? Which is obviously balmy and stupid. Yeah. And I prefer Amazon doing drones. I want drones yeah. to... Yeah, I think... If I got a car, I'm going to... I'd say more believable. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. Well, like the people are going to use it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just bezels. Come at me, come at me. Yeah. Oh, if you could drive them happen. yourself, that'd be even better. That would, be, I mean, that would not be a good idea. Delivery drones. <laughs> a smartphone for an app. That'd be yeah. amazing. Here's your drone. Delivery drones are just asking for the teenage kids drinking their cider yeah. on the park bench. You know, when I was 15, that would be perfect. Like, With a BB gun. Get, exactly, yeah. I mean, great fun, but yeah. not great for people who want or the Or even more perfect that they deliver the cider to you while you're on the park bench. Just well, go, yeah, come maybe, on, yeah. Come yeah, on, yeah. Come yeah come no, that's not, not bad. Use the hour delivery, drop yeah. done. Yeah. Not a bad idea, not a bad idea. Yeah. Actually, okay, I'm all for the drones. <laughs> yeah. um, Drunken drones. Okay, moving on. Uh, the next one comes also on Facebook from Dustin Hawk. Thank you, Dustin. Um, who says, no, now I will have to kill you. Ooh. No, now I will have to kill you. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Are you sure it's tech right Yep. I these all all genuine. Yeah? Yep. Any guesses? Anyone? It's a the bit... best Netflix shows you should right. watch. No. No. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just gonna move on with this one. Um, yeah, so let's this speed is, this up because this we're is the story. Ro- robots are learning to say no to humans. Uh, ah. This is um, engineers at Tuff University basically working on mechanisms for robots to say no to humans so long as there's a good reason to do so. All to do with you know AI and and, and that sort of. Have you seen 2001? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and and the last one is just this is my comment of the week. Um, this comes from. Um, Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Hughes comment of the week. Thank you. Um, this comes from Shay Bramley, um, who says on Facebook, "Shame it wasn't made with the help of fuel, fossil fuel. Get it? Uh, so uh, yes, yeah. yeah. I just, I love the, I just love the, 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 the. He really, you know, went for that. I was going to go with the three D print. The rewards the are obvious." <laughs> um, so thank you all for your for your comments. Um, please please keep leaving them because uh, you know we'll be going back. We uh, need them for the speech. Yeah. more. <laughs> I, I promise to read the site <laughs> next time. <laughs> um, so how your phone how your phone could save a tree? 
James Pepper. That's me again. Back yes. For more Please plans. explain. We need to know. Um, so I did an interview with um, a charity called the Rainforest Connection, who take old smartphones and put them into the trees in the Amazon rainforest to track down illegal loggers. So they put them inside a little case. They put uh, I can't remember exactly what they call them, but they put. Um, little so panels all around them so whenever the sunlight's coming through the trees it will always hit one of these solar panels rather than it just being one big solar panel and a leaf gets in the way um that'll power it they put a high power microphone in it and then it can track exactly where the illegal loggers are around the amazon and it's a really really cool idea because basically you turn up to an illegal when they're logging and you can basically walk up and be like can you stop that mate and they go yeah all right then we've never been caught before so we'll just go home so there's no actual kind of like military operation or anything behind it. You don't actually have to go in their arm or anything. You just go up to them and say, yeah, can you go away? Because the Amazon's so massive that they can't find where these people are. So they're using old smartphones, putting them in the trees, and then you can track people down. How cool is that? That's really cool. I love the idea of just recycling tech for the better yeah. anyway, because obviously when we throw away our technology, mm. it goes into rubbish dumps and yeah. it's bad mm. for the environment. Mm. So something where we're recycling the stuff that is always going to be pretty bad mm. for the environment, just the way they're created, uh, slapping them to a tree yeah. and um, <laughs> and stopping illegal logging, that's, that's brilliant. That's and it can be any kind of phone as well. So you can donate your phone if you want to, if you want to donate your old phone. So if you come along and you donate an iPhone, that will go to one of the people who's actually out there trying to track down the loggers mm. rather than being used in the tree. They don't need that kind of power. They go for like one of the old um, Huawei phones that's the one that they use the most inside the trees but you can donate any of your phones on their actual website and any of your phones on the website and yeah it will get put to good use instead of sitting in the back of your drawer as most of my old smartphones do <laughs> so have they created uh, a, a new kind of solar panel charging device it's, or something? no it's the same kind of solar panels but the way it's set up is new so it, it looks like flowers leaves basically that it means that whenever sunlight hitting through the tree canopy can change so quickly because there's just leaves everywhere. So it will always hit one of these panels and then that'll charge up for the day. Rather than it being one big panel and then getting blocked out, sunlight blocked out, sunlight mm -hmm. blocked out, it will always be powered. It's really cool. cool. The only thing is the forest is gonna be covered in covered in these and it's sort of and what if you leave the alarm on? You got just like <laughs> a whole forest of, of these failing yeah, alarms. These animals just constantly like, yeah like what? Did you do did you do the other really cool thing is um, they're gonna make an app soon where you can actually just listen into the individual phones. Mm -hmm. So if you've right. donated one of those phones, you can find where your phone is and listen into the Amazon rainforest. How cool is that? It's like that you, is can, cool. you can like listen to the animals and everything that's going on. Like you're not listening just for the loggers. You're listening for, and you can use it to like put your kids to sleep, all that mm. kind of stuff. It sounds really interesting. Yeah. Just just walk yeah. through the rainforest, chatting. Hey Siri, and see if any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, may I help you? Very good idea. <laughs> Have you caught a logger? Yeah. <laughs> <Siri. laughs> Imagine Tarzan had that. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's a really nice idea. So how do people donate to this? Do they Oh, it's on the website. So if you go to Step Radar and go for the Amazon Rainforest feature, there's a link in there so you can go through to it. Nice. Good Ashen. stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so our final um, big piece of today is um, about Disney, funnily enough. Um, so we've been digging through Disney. Um, many of you might not know this, but Disney has an, an R&D department who are looking at quite a lot of interesting, cool technology um, and coming up with some great ideas. Um, and we've been digging few, through a few of those um, ideas that I just wanted to throw out to the team yep. here. Um, and I think, I think the main one, I, so that there's, a, there's a lot on the, you can access um, the list of technology being worked on and, and the projects. And there's a lot of stuff on there, but I think some of the, the one of the big ones I picked out, we, we picked up on this uh, a few days ago, um, that Disney's essentially, wor it's working on a smartwatch that will um, create um, contextually relevant services um, and, and actually detect what you're touching. So for example, I could go into the kitchen and pick up a, a frying pan and it will know that I'm making dinner and then it will start, you know, doing mm. things like it might start you the cooker. You never made might, dinner. I have made plenty of dinner. I'm quite good in the kitchen. Plenty oh, yeah. of dinner. Yeah. Plenty of dinner. <laughs> it will dim, dim the lights, put on very white. It could do. If light you a candle. To. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it's the classic. Fun. You know, that's the thing. with a ready book for work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just puts on a sad film. and. She uh, touches <laughs> a frying pan, that's Netflix and children. <laughs> <laughs> Inflate your girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no comment. Um, but in all seriousness, I, th I think that's quite a cool thing. And, and to me, this is like, yeah, I would actually wear a smartwatch for that reason. I mean, we've, we've all yeah. tried a few smartwatches. Yeah. and there's some cool stuff in some of them but something like this I'll be like okay yeah if that can you know if I can if it knows when I open the uh, door to my house to turn on the lights switch on the TV that kind of stuff mm. I mean none of the smart watches really do that at the moment and I think it's great it's a I, cool I, idea. I think for us we picked up in the story because it's Disney and yeah 
we were pretty naive. We didn't know that Disney did all of this R and D no. stuff. Obviously, they've got Pixar and they've got loads of. Uh, they're one of the most technologically advanced mm. um, companies in the world. But yeah. seeing that they're doing this R and D on on smartwatches and uh, is is fascinating. The whole idea of knowing what you're about to pick up or what you are picking up mm. so could smart. well be the future of of, of, of wearables. But, yeah, um, it's yeah. it's about context. And, yeah, you know, it, gives, it, it gives it a natural reason, doesn't it? Like the, one of the main complaints about smartwatches at the moment is it does everything that your phone does in your pocket. Your phone yeah. can't tell what you're about to touch. Like mm. that's the yeah, that would actually yeah. give wearable technology a point. That yeah, would actually absolutely, give it a reason to be on your wrist rather than being in your pocket. I wonder if you get electric shock if you pick up like a, a DreamWorks Blu-ray or something. <laughs> yeah. Going into the cinema yeah. that isn't Star Wars <laughs> or Marvel. <laughs> Or a Disney movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it could be like maybe you're on a you know a fitness regime and you go to reach for a muffin and it gives you an electric yeah. shock. Like, no, no, <laughs> not, not today. Yeah. Um, it's it, going to start selling you stuff as well, isn't it? It's going to be like customers who like this, like that. Yeah, yeah. You will start getting yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> brings but, a whole new dimension to masturbation, that's for sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you went there, the he went there. <laughs> yeah. We've managed to keep the tone reasonably high. Not anymore. Anyway. I don't think Disney and masturbation have ever been in the same sentence. Uh, until now. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> listeners. That's An what interesting we're point for. that I read about this was Disney using it in their theme parks, giving guests a little watch, not necessarily with a display, but then being able to track where they go. So oh, every wow. sort of toilet yeah. that they enter, every ride that they go yeah. in, yeah. they can really minutely detail every park. Well, they're really activity. advanced with that, aren't they? Because they've got their own. Um, well, they used to have their own currency, but now they have mm. it all pretty much on your on your wrist. So you may. Mm. So they yeah they're they're. The yeah. Technology well yeah. Advanced. And there were there are a few others. Well, I just want to quickly list them. There was one that's human loudspeakers. So essentially, I could touch you and you'd be able to hear Amazing. sound through through that, which I think is just incredible. Yeah. Um, and you kind I, of do that with bone. Kind yeah, of. It is. It is like that. Way, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um. And you know, I mean, these are probably like years down the line, but it's cool that they're looking at them. A lot of VR stuff as well, like. Um, the haptic feedback stuff they had some cool ideas mm. for that the way you could you know especially for kids you know obviously Disney being you know a company that's very much about kids entertainment yeah. but um, there was a VR vest as well they were working on where you'd, you'd wear it and I don't know what you'd feel like maybe the wind blowing or something but the, the example they, they I think was given was you know a kid reading a storybook and, and you could really kind of yeah. imagine doing that and things on your hands you look weird but imagine how you know lifelike that would feel have they created a lightsaber it's only a matter of time. It's, got to it's be, only it? a matter of time. They've only had the rights a few years. That's so true. Let that feed through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they've only made one film so far. So, yeah. <laughs> if you were to make a, on the lightsabers. if you were to make a lightsaber, would you make it safe or dangerous? Oh, dangerous. Well, it would have to be. How dangerous. would you make it, it safe? It's like lightsaber. any kind of. Well, to have to have the beam, but so if you hit someone with it, it doesn't chop their arm off. Oh, they, they, you want to chop their arm off. Okay, cool. You'd yeah, be the point. Things off. Yeah, I mean that's it. Has to be dangerous, but it can be used for good, as the Star Wars films have taught us. So, mm. you know. yeah. By chopping bad <laughs> things off. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, for our final section, we're at the Hall of Fame time. Now, I think we renamed this last week to the... Hall of Fame? Draw, so draw of something? Glory or something. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, yes. um, where anything, basically well. we introduce... One, one of the members uh, introduces an item that they want to put into the Hall of Fame. It can be, it can be pretty much anything, really, yeah. can't it? Um, and I think, John, it's your turn this week Ooh. to hit us with something you believe is worthy of being entered into the the Hall of Fame. So, uh, as every week, we play a little guessing game. So yes. I've got some facts to uh, whet your Ooh, appetite. And see if you can, can I just uh, say not every week, because I got it wrong. I told you what it <laughs> That's was. That's true. Thanks for reminding everyone. Yeah. Cool. So, first clue. It spanned six years, but it only lasted a total of a 385 minutes. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, it's... It's a franchise. Oh, yes. Star That's Wars, a really maybe? Good point. I, I think it's Star Wars. No, I don't know. No, it's Star Wars has found longer than Of six course it years. has, yeah, of course. A TV show? 385 minutes. What's that? Uh, six, it, seven, ten hours? It grossed over 2.7 billion. Okay. It's oh, not okay. A and it has resulted in numerous spin offs, merchandise, games, and even theme park rides. Harry Potter. Oh, Harry Potter. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Uh, no, the, the, uh, the first guess was right, it was the original Star Wars trilogy. Oh, 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 and it. Span Six Years was the time it took between the first and the last yeah. the film being released. Uh, so I, I do like that you've forgotten about the prequels. I think yeah. that's a very good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a Hall of Fame. <laughs> this is not the Hall of Stuff which was okay. Yeah. And, and that's for another time. Not the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> the Cone of Shame. Uh, it's got to go in, hasn't it, Star Wars? Surely. 
Are we talking about the the um, the shows themselves? Or are we talking about the cinema? The shows. Sorry. <laughs> are you talking about Theater. the theatre. Yeah. <laughs> we have the vaudeville style. Are we talking about the films themselves? Or are we talking about like uh, we're talking the, about the Blu-rays or the? No, we're talking about the original trilogy of movies. Right. Without George Lucas's edits. Correct. Well, well, kind of with, <laughs> but also. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, it's got to go in. No, not the, not the, the remastered ones. Okay. Ooh. Without Shadow of Doubt, it's got to go in. It's obviously one of the biggest and best franchises ever. I'm sure episode seven is going to be um, amazing. You're sure? I'm hoping. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bought many tickets to go watch it. So I'm hoping. It's <laughs> gonna, how many did you buy? I only bought two, but I bought one that's non IMAX and then one okay. that was IMAX. Yeah. So there is a reason, to my, method to my madness. Um, you love Star Wars. I love Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's got to go in. Okay, that's Mark, that's a yes from Mark. James. Yeah, I'm going to the midnight screening for Force Awakens. I love Star Wars to pieces. Um, I even sometimes apologise for parts of the pre- prequels. So yeah, let's go. It for loves it. you too. It's in there. <laughs> I, I'm going to say yes, but I would like to point out. What I caveats? Really, no, there is a caveat to this that I, I love Star Wars. I adored it, you know, growing up, and I was actually like properly obsessed for for a period of my time. But so when you step back, I, I think we can all agree that maybe Return of the Jedi isn't... Like, it's not a perfect trilogy. Get it's out. a great franchise that tells a wonderful story. Get and it's, it's a really... Get out. It's a universe that feels alive. There's Get other stuff. You know, but, like, <laughs> Return of the Jedi wasn't... I, I, Empire, I think, is an amazing movie. And I think it... For a number of yeah, reasons. Yeah, it is. But, oh, like... Yeah, no. and, and, but, I'm just shaking my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's not a perfect trilogy, I don't think. I think there are, there are faults to it. I think Return of the Jedi has it got problems. So yeah, I there's mean, there's no it's better not. trilogy though. Uh, Toy Story. You know what? I'd say Toy Story is yeah. a stronger trilogy than Star Wars. That said, I do think, of course, yeah, I do think it should be entered the Hall of Fame for for many reasons. Yeah. But yes, it's 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 in there. Return so. of the Jedi's got the, f- the first half of Return of the Jedi is the is some of the best Star Wars. You've ever that's seen. the problem. The first part of that I loved up until the the Sarlacc and after that. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, um, I think that's yeah, great. So I, I love that. Um, but I do think yeah, there are problems, and you know, even a New Hope, I'd say, isn't. I mean, I love a New Hope, but it's not a low empire for me. I just completely changed my opinion of you. But I don't. Uh, this is my point. Though. It's, I'm talking like whatever, whatever you say from now to eternity, <laughs> you're still going to be. I love them, and I just I, I feel yeah, bad saying guy. it, but it's like someone like I think a lot of us would agree that. Return it like it's not a perfect trilogy. Like there I said, there are faults in Return. I there agree. are faults. Like, and, 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 I'm not saying there's not faults, but I think you're completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's beside the point because we've all agreed yep. that we're all entering it in. So yeah, and on but that bombshell. And on that bombshell, we are wrapping up. So um, thanks for another watching and listening for another week. <laughs> um, and you know, thanks for liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter. You know, let us know what you think in the comments. We're we're taking your feedback very Enjoy seriously. Enjoy us on SoundCloud. Yeah, you know, yeah. Tweet at us, SoundCloud. Just yell at us in the street. You know, give us some more code. Definitely yell at you about Star Wars. Yell at me. Give me your opinion <laughs> on why I'm wrong about Star Wars. Star Wars. How dare yeah. I not think it's perfect? Yeah. Um, and we'll see you again next week.